In the pioneer spirit of Israel, the Mirage Foundation has adopted the Negev and its development as the main focus of its philanthropic activity in the Jewish homeland. Representing nearly 60% of Israel's landmass, the Negev holds untapped potential to expand Israel's economic base, provides an unsurpassed quality of life for young Israeli families, and offers forgotten beauty and historical significance for the enjoyment of residents and tourists from around the world. Indeed, America is falling in love with the Negev. Building upon extensive successful entrepreneurial heritage, the Mirage Foundation Israel promotes the development of the Negev. All the development and program efforts are conducted with the deepest respect for the land, its residents, and the diverse cultures which exist in the Negev. What are we looking at? It looks like a mobile home in Palm Springs, California. Uh, more or less it is. This is how our organization first started. Uh, in 2002, two of our founders decided that their model for changing what it meant to live in the Negev would be to bring young people to live here. So what they did was they bought these mobile caravans, moved them to the desert and tried to provide a way that they could bring young people to develop a relationship to live here. Their idea was to provide full scholarships and subsidize rent to come live in these student villages and in exchange the students would be working with the community, learning to mean learning what it meant to live and uh, work with the people that live here, what it would mean to make the commitment to living here long term, and even just the basic idea that you're not going to lose so much when you live here. That moving out of Be'er Sheva and moving out of Tel Aviv can still also have a different life with just as much that you can get out of it. We're in the yeshuv, in, in, the vil, in the town of Ashalim. Inside of the town is what's called a kfar studentim, a student village. This started actually with just two people living in this caravan right here. The CEO actually still lives here. Um, this is our very first village, which was founded in 2002. We've grown from those two people in this one village after 10 years to 13 villages with over 700 students, working with families, working with social projects, and then also physically building the villages we live in. So it's important to note that as we walk through here, everything that you see will have been built by Ayalim students and volunteers, from the paths we walk on to the houses we live in. Well, we've just about finished our building here. Um, the original plan was to expand this to twice the size, but as things have grown, we kind of realized that anything bigger than this really loses a lot of the communal feel. So rather than just expand where we are here, we look to expand in new places with the idea of casting a wider net. We've really maxed out the impact we can have on the community here. It's grown from 10 years ago when we first moved in, there being only 14 families. And now there are 98 families living here and there's actually a waiting list to move into Ashalim. We have communal uh, midrash where we sit and have philosophical discussions. We may have a very strong community aspect, but we don't really subscribe to the kibbutz model anymore. Uh, in this 21st century world, we're not looking to have a discussion on whether I want if I want to buy a TV, if that's something I can do or not. Uh, that being said, we may not have a chadar ochel, but we eat together. Everyone will bring something to a potluck type thing. So we pick and choose the things that we like from the communal lifestyle in a way that's fitting for the 21st century. We have a thing that we say here a lot that we're not doing anything new. We're just doing what was done in a way that's right for us. Well, there are people that are really looking to be chalutzim, to be pioneers again, uh, looking to start something new in a place that really has seen a lot of neglect uh, outside of the center of Israel. That being said, where they come from is an incredible cross-section of Israeli society. There are people here who grew up on kibbutzim that are idealistically secular, so they never had a bar about mitzvah. There are people here who grew up in the West Bank and are Shomer Nagia. In fact, my roommate and the person living next to us in 2005, he was a soldier bringing people out of Gaza, and she was a protester saying the people shouldn't be brought out of Gaza. And these are people all kind of coming together, learning to live together, and work towards this common go goal of developing the Negev and the Galil. I think in really even five or ten years, it's going to be a completely different landscape. 
we're starting to see a movement of people not just moving to this Negev, to the Negev for idealistic reasons, but for practical reasons. In response to the protests that were going on in Tel Aviv, we collected names of people saying, hey, there's another option here. There are places where it is only a 45-minute train ride to the center, where you can live down here and still live with all the things that you want to live with and just make some minor sacrifices where in the long run you can really be a part of making significant change. And as far as numbers for that, I can tell you in 2008, 32 families moved to the Negev. And in 2011, 300 families moved to the Negev. Now those aren't numbers that can really make significant change, but we're moving in the direction that people don't see it as such a crazy idea to move here anymore. It's something that's becoming reasonable in their minds. We have the benefit of everyone in our student villages being students, so obviously that's what they're doing. After that, we have some difficulties because we do have an overwhelming majority of our graduates wanting to stay in the Negev. In fact, 85% of all of our graduates do make the decision to stay in the periphery of the country, whether the Negev or the Galil. As far as employment, we have a lot of entrepreneurial programs um, with the Mirage Foundation where trying to encourage people to start their own projects with the idea that if you can create your own job then you don't need to be looking for one. But still we don't really have that critical mass that we need to bring jobs here. Uh, hopefully with a lot of help from outside organizations and from the government we can start bringing big companies down here. But for now the people who are making this decision, the large majority of them are commuting to other places to work. Within ILM we do have a job placement program where we have a certain person whose specific job is if you're an alum who wants to stay in the Negev, and you have an idea of where you want to work, we will find a place for you to work. We'll find somewhere that you can live your life and, and have all the things that you'll need to, to support yourself. The truth is there are things to do. It's just on us to create those things. And living in a communal setting like this, we're forced to create those things for ourselves. So we built a pub, and once a week we have a special staff that will run a pub night for the week. We have a staff that makes sure there's cultural activities where we'll be discussing whether it's a holiday coming up or philosophical issues or even just why we come here and the goals that we're trying to achieve here. Almost every night during the week we have something that will bring us all together to do something. I think it's important to remember how young Israel is. That for most of the people living here it was their grandparents who were founding the country. So in that aspect, I think there's a, a strong draw to that, that people want to still build and do something. I think if there's anything that really speaks to that, it's the fact that we have about 5,000 applications every year from Israelis wanting to join our program. Now, I say we have 700 people because that's how many beds we have. We can't take more than that. But there's a real movement of young people here going completely against this label of apathy that's been uh, labeled upon us. And I don't think that it's something that's just Israeli, but really distinctly Jewish to want to come to Israel and build something here to make the country as a whole a better place.